start today uh, by talking about uh, Joe Biden and Martin Luther King Jr. I know it seems weird, it seems strange, and oh, by the way, I will. A lot of people get concerned when I kind of peek at my notes a little bit, and uh, they get they get like scared and shit for me, and that's very adorable, and I, and I, and I love you guys for for caring so much, but. We're going to be okay. I've got my eyes on the road. We're doing fine. Uh, but thank you for your concern. I love you guys. You guys are super fucking sweet uh, to, 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 to care that, that, that much about poor, poor little old me. So, but, uh, but I do. I want to talk about Biden and Martin Luther King Jr. I know it seems kind of weird. Like, these aren't really two figures uh, that you want to put in a sentence together. Uh, you know, like, nobody's ever been like, you know who Joe Biden makes me think of MLK Jr. Because MLK Jr. would have hated Joe Biden. <laughs> like, that's the only way that that would fucking work. <laughs> it's never like MLK Jr. and Joe Biden. Boy, two peas in a pod, huh? If that if that pod was all about uh, fighting for a one piece right to be a person. <laughs> like, that's... Uh, and the other and the other P being like, we gotta make... Comp- we gotta make compromises with racists. Like, that's... That's the only way that, that, that it makes sense. But I, I, I'm, uh, I'm going to show you that, that uh, we can talk about these two guys uh, in a specific context, right? Uh, and I'm going to and I'm gonna, uh, quote uh, something that MLK said in one of his speeches. He said, The white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice, negative peace, which is the absence of tensions, to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice. That's an MLK Jr. quote. Uh, he was kind of warning about these moderates and, and not to trust them in this situation. Don't trust these moderates. Don't trust these people that kind of say, we're going to be middle of the road. We're going to be the, the compromise candidate, you know, because because they what they're compromising is your, your freedom, your, the justice for you, the people. It, you know, they're, they're not fighting for your civil liberties. Uh, they're not fighting for your rights, your, your reason to be treated like a human being. Um, where that, That's the compromise. They put that over to the side and they levy up corporations and say, well, the corporations will, will help out. These, um, these other uh, political vehicles will, will help out. And uh, there is absolutely no evidence uh, showing that to be true. So the moderate plan is the plan of the status quo. It's the plan of, uh, of, of the moderates themselves enriching themselves uh, via the support of these ultra-rich people. That's kind of what it is. So to me, voting for anybody with moderate sensibilities, to me, any voting for anybody that, that says that they want to be the compromise candidate, and now they've changed that word, and they call them the unity candidate, right, but, but fucking Joe Biden is not the unity candidate, Pete Buttigieg wasn't the unity candidate, Amy Klobuchar wasn't the unity candidate, and fuck all of Elizabeth Warren is the unity candidate, none of these people are unity candidates, they're, they're corporate candidates, they're candidates that are willing to bend to the will of, of, uh, uh, of the corporate elite, of the, uh, the 1%, of the ultra-rich people that pay into their campaigns, and they don't give a shit about you. They're the white moderates that are all about the order, and the order is the status quo, and the status quo is making sure that super-rich people uh, are, are fully taken care of and uh, continue to enrich themselves uh, at, you know, at, the, at the, uh, uh, the, the, the sake of our rights and our justice and our, uh, our health and, um, you know, the, the, the people get forgotten so that the, 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 the small amount of people up at the top can be. That's what MLK was warning us about the 60s, right? And Joe Biden fucking fits that bill. Especially when we talk about the fact that these, these, these moderates, the, especially the white liberal moderates, um, it's, and, and I think Martin Luther King Jr. brings up um, white moderates because you have to look at it in the context of the civil rights era of the 60s uh, where, where there was a lot of tension between white and black people in this country. Um, and so, you know, who he has to get on board with the civil rights movement is not just black people because, I mean, most black people are on board. They're in. Why, why the fuck wouldn't they be? Uh, who he has to get on board 
um, are, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the middle of the road, well, it's not so bad, you know, what's so bad about segregation? You should be happy getting your own little place, your own little bubble to, to live and do whatever in, and, and that should be what you want, that's nice, it's good, it's good for you, like, that moderate is, you know, and those were usually, you know, middle class white folk that weren't really paying attention, that were kind of being told what to think by the media, and go figure, none of that has fucking changed a whole lot, huh? So, uh, Joe Biden is, is sort of the epitome of that, though, um, especially when we look at, look at the notion of order, his crime bill was a law and order bill, that's what he preaches, right, that's what all of these people that preach these, you know, uh, criminal justice reform bills, they always preach that this is the law and order bill. We're trying to we're trying to reinstate law and order. Well, the question is, uh, what came first, the, the militarized police or the crime on the streets? And if it was crime on the streets, how much? <clears throat> you know, was it an overwhelming amount of crime that was on the streets, and something had to be done? Was it were, were, were these neighborhoods in total shambles and chaos, or was that just a narrative that was spun? because of the racism of that time. And in 1994, when he presented the crime bill, it was all about that law and order. It was all about criminalizing and demonizing uh, fucking uh, communities of color. No different than what Bloomberg did with his stop and frisk shit. And in 1994, I do believe that Joe Biden was in better mental standing than he is now. Uh, so I'm sure that he made a very good argument by using a lot of, uh, uh, pardon the pun here, colorful language uh, to uh, to get his bill across, to, to get people to look at that and say, yeah, you know what, Joe's making a lot of sense right now. And no one has said that in this election race for, for about Joe Biden. No one has been like, wow, you know, that corn pop speech sure did make a whole lot of fucking sense. Nobody fucking said that. <laughs> So, uh, you, you know, uh, Joe Biden is absolutely the, the law and order guy. He is, he is the uh, white liberal that is far, far more concerned about, uh, about maintaining law and order. And maintaining law and order, I will again reiterate that it's not law and order for us, the people. It's law and order to make sure that we don't disrupt anything for rich people. You know, but Biden's never really treated the people very well. He he wants you to believe that he does. Again, it's like these laws kind of have uh, these trickle down type of effects, where it's like, oh, if we make good laws that strengthen and and, and help rich people. And, and maintain order for them, then it'll just come down to you. The order will find its way back to the back to the common people. And that's never fucking been the case, right? Biden Biden was he bragged about working with with segregationists. He 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 that's the compromise candidate, right? Like oh yeah, no. What, what we have to do is compromise with the races. Basically say hey, you can't say such blatant racist things. You can think them. But don't say them. Let's look, legislate about it and uh, and have some flowery language and, and convince the people. That, that's not legis That's not compromise. It's just compromising to say you can still be a fucking racist. Uh, and we throw we throw the black community a little bit of a bone uh, and say, look, we're fucking helping you out. You need us to help you out. Many of more civil rights leaders uh, like uh, MLK Jr., Black Panthers. Uh, Malcolm X, all of them, that basically were like, no, nah, you know what, we don't need this white savior bullshit. If you're gonna be on our side, be on our side. Actually fight with us. Uh, don't don't sit there and say we're throwing you a bone because we can. Uh, and and it, it matters because of the color of our skin. Actually fight with us. Be in the fight with us. Be in the trenches with us. Uh, and Joe Biden's not doing that. He's compromising with a bunch of people that are actively legislating against the black community, against Latino communities, against the you know, 
And he also talked down to Anita Hill, right? Like, so he kind of matches not only these this compromising uh, Republican uh, ideologies of like let's be let's be more coy about our racism, but he's also that like condescending liberal elite that's like, oh, well, I'm the white liberal and I am uh, very forward thinking. So you not being as forward thinking as me, uh, because you're not as liberal as I am, can't understand it. Like, so he talked down to Anita Hill because he's got that mentality for himself too. <clears throat> he voted for the Iraq war and made, made claims that that's the right thing. It, it's just so bizarre that the Democratic Party just evolved into being this party of war, uh, you know, as much as the Republican Party did. They're both parties of war. Both of the parties are parties that that are just fucking foaming at the mouth to just attack another country, to, to seize the resources of another country, to dictate what this country should be doing with, with their with their infrastructure and their citizenship. Just fucking foaming at the mouth. And he voted for that shit. And he also brags about uh, about the about the healthcare plan, Obamacare, right? He brags, brags about Obamacare being this uh, being this great plan. Oh, look at all these people that uh, that got healthcare because of it. Yeah, they might have gotten healthcare because of it. They might have had to, they might have bought into health insurance because of it. But how many people did it really help? Just because you bought into healthcare does not mean that the healthcare system is helping you. Those people still have medical debt, even though they have insurance. We, we saw tons of stories about that. Tons of stories about people that paid, a, like, a couple hundred dollars every month into a health insurance system that when they got sick, they were still burdened with tens of thousands of dollars worth of medical debt. That's not helping people. You should not be bragging about a program that did that. You should be saying, oh, yeah, you know, we put this into place and we didn't really fully think it through. We, we kind of half-assed it because, hey, guess what? I'm the compromise candidate, and uh, we half-assed it because we had all these Republicans that we needed to work with, so we gave the Republicans a couple of the measures that we want, which, in turn, what, what we really gave them was uh, the rights of the people to not be in debt. That's what we compromised. We compromised on your right to not be in debt for getting sick. I was talking about this with uh, with uh, uh, my good friend Mark Viola last night, and I was telling him a story about uh, how I was having a conversation uh, when I was uh, 17, 18, and this notion of universal health care was uh, first introduced into my life. I, I don't think I had really even heard of that concept until that point. Honestly, like, I didn't really understand what health care was because in India we don't fucking, like, I, did, I never grew up with the notion of health insurance. Like, we went to the doctor, they gave us a bill, we paid it. And it wasn't this astronomical, like, $17,000 bill for going to get in a fucking checkup or going to a hospital. Like, that was never a notion that we had to worry about when I was a kid. Uh, the idea of health insurance really only came about when I moved to the States. And I had to be on my parents' health insurance for a while. So, I had this conversation with a friend of mine who was telling me, like, well, you know, do you want to pay for sick people? Do you want to pay for other people getting sick? Because that's what universal health care is. That's what socialism does. And, you know, at the age of 17, I did not have um, the political know-how of how to debate that argument. Right? Um, but what I did say was, well, you know, it seems like a lot of people are uh, sick and they should be taken care of instead of being punished for being sick. Like, it seems like this debt is punishing them for being sick. I don't think we should be paying other, paying for other people to, you know, to when they get sick, we should be paying them to take care of their hospital bills. Sure, I can kind of get on board with that, but I feel like it's not that, though. Universal health care is basically all of us pay into it, and then we just don't have to worry about being in debt for possibly getting sick at some point. Um, that's what it seems like it is. And we went back and forth. And, and when I made that argument of like, hey, I don't think people should be 
penalized or in trouble for getting sick. That's the crux of the healthcare thing. Just like, oh, are you calling me a bad person? And I was like, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not saying you're a bad person. I'm just saying, like, it just seems like the the argument you're making for this system is flawed based on this point of view that I'm bringing to the table that perhaps you haven't considered. Perhaps you have them. I'm not. I'm not really sure. Maybe you don't give a shit about sick people. Maybe, maybe, maybe you do believe that. I, but I'm, I don't know that. If that's what you believe, then let's have a discussion about that. But you know, eventually another friend of mine got very upset at the, the discussion, so we kind of, we kind of stopped it. But you know, I, I didn't have the, the know, the know-how of how to do it. And you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. You learn more and more every day to kind of evolve and change your belief systems and um, so on and so forth. But. But that was the Biden law, though. That was what the Affordable Care Act we were discussing was the initial way the Affordable Care Act was being presented. And, you know, as as um, uh, connected to the, the, the Congress that uh, Joe Biden was at the time, you would have thought that if he was really friends and really uh, a, a advocate for Barack Obama that he would have gone to Congress and talked to some of his Republican buddies, some of these segregationists, and said, hey, you know, I think it's time that we did this. And, and let me tell you why. And made an argument for it. But he didn't. He basically pushed to have the Affordable Care Act, which would have provided universal basic income, uh, universal basic income, sorry, uh, universal health care, uh, you know, kind of like this Medicare for All plan that we're talking about. I don't think it was exactly that, but it was universal health care. Um, it would have, it would have pushed that forward, which would have made the Medicare for All argument a whole lot fucking easier. But the reason why there's hundreds and thousands of people that can't afford their health insurance and they get penalized for it, that's punishing poor people. This is who Joe Biden is. He's the liberal moderate. This is the guy that fucking Martin Luther King Jr. was like, watch out for this person. Listen to the way they talk. Because they're talking about protecting their own investments. And they're trying to convince you that by looking for, for justice and equality, that you're wrong. It's unachievable because we have to compromise with people that want inequality. People that want to, to, to the injustice to persist because that's how they become wealthy. You want to vote for Joe Biden, you're essentially voting for that. You're, you're voting for a compromise candidate. That's not the unity candidate. You're voting for a compromise candidate. What are they going to compromise? Your fucking rights. Equality and justice for the for us, we the people. That's what he compromises. That's who Joe Biden really is. Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you are a, a uh, first-time viewer uh, of these videos, first time viewer of these, uh, or a listener of these videos, please subscribe. Please make sure that you are subscribed and come back to check out other videos. I talk about uh, a variety of political, philosophical, and sociological topics uh, 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 quite often on this channel. Sometimes we also get pretty nerdy on this channel. I gotta talk about some nerdy comic booky anime type shit. I'm into that as well. So if you're into that sort of stuff and this is your first time that you're catching this video, hit that subscribe button. Make sure that you are liked and subscribed to this page uh, to get all of the updates when I put, uh, put out more videos. And if you are a returning user, welcome back. Thank you so much for, for, for being a returning viewer uh, of these videos. Uh, if you enjoy the type of material that we are talking about in these videos, then there is a very good chance uh, that you will enjoy my live stand-up comedy show. I'm a live stand-up comedian as well as uh, a, a guy that yells in my car. Uh, I've got live stand-up comedy tour dates coming up uh, in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. 
Des Moines, Iowa, uh, Moline, Illinois, the Quad Cities area, Chicago, Illinois, Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm going to be recording my live stand-up comedy album March 20th in Washington, D.C., March 21st in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, and April 2nd through the 4th at the Pittsburgh Fringe Festival. Uh, I'm also opening for my good friend Lee Camp uh, with special guest Eleanor Goldfield on some of these shows. Uh, Lee is doing a book release tour, and if you purchase VIP tickets of his stand-up comedy shows, you get a free copy of his book and uh, a free souvenir of his latest comedy special as well. Uh, Lee in, uh, is going to be coming to Flagstaff, Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, Asheville, North Carolina, two shows in Asheville, North Carolina, uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, Burlington, Vermont, Montreal, Quebec, Canada, Ottawa, Ontario, and so many more dates. You can check out my entire touring schedule, including one I'm going to be opening up for Lee Camp uh, at ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, grab those tickets. Come hang out with me. Come. Let's get weird. Let's get esoteric. Let's talk about some deep shit. Uh, if you want to become a sustaining member to help improve the quality and quantity of these videos and uh, the writings that I would do regularly on my website, uh, there are very simple ways that you can become a sustaining member and contribute financially. Uh, first and foremost is Patreon at patreon.com slash Krishmogan. Ha ha. Uh, you can check out the rewards and the tiers and the goals that you would help support. Another way is by donating directly on my website at ramennoodlescomedy.com. R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. You see these big orange buttons uh, and there are various different levels that you can contribute. Various different levels that will get you various different little uh, prizes and stuff like that. Uh, you can direct, directly donate onto my website if you don't want to go through a third party thing. And the last and final way is uh, by becoming a sustaining member on my Bandcamp page at ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. That's R A M A N noodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. Uh, you can become a sustaining member uh, and you get uh, unreleased uh, comedy and storytelling content that aren't released on any other live comedy albums or uh, on YouTube or any of, any of that sort of stuff. It's exclusive collections for the people that become sustaining members. Also, if you listen to my podcast on Anchor.fm, if you listen to the audio version of my podcast, you can listen to it on Anchor.fm and become a sustaining member directly there. So you would you, be directly... Um, helping out the podcast uh, through, through that as well. So if you don't want to go through these third-party channels and you want to go direct, that's one of the ways to do that as well. Um, thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you guys for uh, getting all the way to the end, hearing me ramble about some shit at the very end of it. I very, very much appreciate it. I hope to see you guys at a live show. I hope you guys share this video around, show to some people that you think would really enjoy it, or to, to some of your enemies to enlighten them a little bit more. Uh, but uh, till the next video, see you on the road.